You are listening to the Sports and Sorts Podcast. He's to left field. Going back towards. Looking up. See ya. 3,000. History. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event. Welcome back to Sports and Sports. This is episode 131. It is Wednesday, and I am one of your hosts. My name is Shane Moore. And I'm your other host, the Brian Man. And we go live every Monday at 10 a.m., Wednesday at 11 a.m., and Saturday at 10 a.m. So you can and you can also find this show in the audio ver- audio only version of this show anywhere podcasts are played. And today we are going to obviously be talking about the World Series. We're going to get into some NFL hot trade topics and our Thursday night football picks. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into to a little bit more. We always tend to get off a little bit, a little bit off on topic, but uh, I don't know. You were just mentioning how Freddie's going to be on the Goldbergs, which is exciting. So we can talk about that maybe for about a half second. Um, so we got that and so much more. We got a great show. Let's go. You are listening to Sports and Sorts with Shane and the Bry Man. All right, so um, lots to talk about today. I think we're going to get, we're going to start off because I think a majority of our show is going to be about baseball. Um, That's just what this show is going to be about today because it got a pretty important game going on right now. Um, But we're going to start off with a little bit of a recap from what happened last week, which is the uh, uh, Monday Night Football, well, this, this week, Monday Night Football, Giants versus Falcons. It was a close game, and even though... I would have won using the points that I was given via Vegas. The Giants were, uh, they, they ended up losing the game. And I picked the Giants to win outright, so I lost. The Bry Man won. Um, and on Monday Night Football, everything kind of happened the way I thought it was going to happen. The Giants were able to move the ball up and down the field. They did, but they couldn't put points on the board because, one, because only good teams can put the ball in the end zone in, when they're in the red zone. And two, their coach made some boneheaded decisions. Um, so Brian got this one right. I was wrong. The game was okay at best. And uh, the ramifications of the loss is something, you know, we'll get into kind of right now. Um, yes. And Clint, uh, you know, puts out pick watch, hashtag pick watch. And this isn't what we're talking about when we're, we're mentioning Nathan Peterman or uh, Derek Anderson. It's not that kind of pick watch. It's draft pick watch because there are a lot of teams that are really seem to be vying for that number one pick. Um, so the Giants lost against the Falcons, immediately started a fire sale, and they got rid of Eli Apple in a great move by the Saints, I think, um, and also dumped Snacks Harrison's to the Lions. Um which is a pretty good move by them. You know, they only had to give away a fifth round pick. So I, I think it's a pretty good move. Yeah. Um, and it makes sense. You know, the Giants are one and six. They have played terrible. And even on defense, they haven't been good. So, you know, why not throw in the towel? Um, the only real argument that you have in this, in this situation is that the division is so bad that you could, you could come back and make a run. But even with that, you would still have to put on a great winning streak. And I just don't see that happening. I mean, OBJ, he wants Eli gone, Eli Manning. He wants Eli Manning gone. It seems like Shermer doesn't care if Eli stays. Like, he wants him gone. They don't seem to be on the same page. So it's like time to move on, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I I don't know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little split here because I think it's going to be hard for the Maras to probably dump him. Uh, there is obviously loyalty there. I would get rid of him. I'd try and trade him to the Jags. There's a need there for sure. Problem is with Eli though, like 
it's hard to tell what he really has left. I mean, if you watch him, I don't know. I mean, is is trading him to the Jags really going to be the answer for the Jags? I don't think so. I mean, I I mean, he might be a slight step up above Blake Bortles at this point, but it's just not there He's anymore. A and I, thrower. And I, I, and mean, I love Eli. I love Eli Manning. I love him. I mean, as a, to me, Eli Manning will always, even as a Dolphins fan, Eli Manning will have a special place in my heart because he has prevented the Patriots from being seven-time Super Bowl champions yes. as opposed to five, which is bad enough. But thank God for Eli and his Super Bowl MVPs because without him, it, it, the the Patriots' wound would be even more excruciating and more open and you know grotesque than it already is. Yeah. But so Eli's got a special place in my heart, but I just don't know that. I mean, even if you can trade him, okay, you're not, I don't think you're getting much for him. And again, even if you do, if you're the team on the other end of that, what are your expectations for him? I mean, if you're trading for, (laughs) yeah, if you're trading for Eli Manning and you're expecting to go to a Super Bowl, then you're not making the right trade. With the right team you could possibly do. I'm like, if he does Uh. go to the Jags. I mean, Blake Bortles has been so here's bad. The, he just here's can't the throw thing. the ball, and he has he has some options to throw to. He just but the problem with the Jags is is the, the, the Jags are not playing well on defense right now either. Which was supposed they were supposed to have a stout championship defense. And but you have to think well that that would change more than I mean, because you, if you have Blake Bortles who's turning the ball over left and right, and not get, and you know getting three and out left and right, left and right, that wears your. I defense mean, it's not down. out. Sure, it wears yeah. the defense down for sure. But but I I don't know. I just I don't know how much of an upgrade. That really would be for the Jags. I, I I think it would be minimal at best, and I don't know that at this point it really helps the Jags. It even makes the Jags a a, a, a playoff team. Yeah. Um, you know, here, and here's the other thing in the NFL too. Uh, right now, I mean, if you're not one of three teams, <clears throat> I'm waving the white flag. If you're not the Chiefs, the Rams, or the Patriots, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, there's just like the NFL is as top heavy, I think, as I've ever seen it this year. It really, and it's those three teams. One of those three teams, barring a miracle, is winning the Super Bowl this year. I mean, bank on it. It's going to happen. One of those three teams is probably winning. And honestly, it's as much as I hate to say it, it's probably really still between the Rams and the Pats. But I don't know. Look, the Giants, I, I will say this, though. I mean, the Saints, I actually think. Of all of this mess, I think made out the best here because Eli Apple's actually been playing better this year. Um, so I, I don't know what the Giants got in return there. I don't know what the draft pick was, I but don't know either. I, I know they got a fifth rounder for snacks. Yep. Uh, I'm imagining they got a little bit higher for Eli, maybe a third or a fourth, but for, for a decent corner, I mean, you usually that, get a little but, bit more, yeah. But that's a big, but that that's a that's a help for the Saints, and I actually do think that that's a move that will help Eli Apple. I think he'll go there. I think he can help stabilize their secondary a little bit. Which uh, their top defense of, has been getting better too. So that, it has. Is, is gonna be and, I, and, and on top of that though, I think it will rejuvenate him. Now he's gone, he has gone right now from the, you know, from the basement to the penthouse. Yeah. And uh, I, I think at, at this point he'll, you'll see, you'll see Eli Apple playing a little bit. Obviously there's going to be an adjustment in the first few weeks there, but I think it's a good move for the saints. And if you're the Giants, I mean, look, it's not a horrible move either. I mean, you you know, if you want to try and do what the Raiders are doing, I mean, the Raiders are doing it on a different scale because the Raiders are trading guys and getting first round picks in return and really, really, really built get, setting themselves up for long term success. If so long as John Gruden makes the right picks, so this is this isn't quite on that on that level. But I mean, look, the Giants are trying to set themselves up. For next year's draft to, you know, have a few more picks. They're going to need a lot of players next year. We know first and foremost, the Giants are absolutely positively drafting a quarterback. And I think the reason why maybe they're compiling some of these picks is to use them to trade up if they have to. If they don't have that number one pick and they have their heart set on the Oregon quarterback, Oregon, uh, yeah, the Oregon quarterback, then you could, then you could start to pile some of these picks, Herbert. You can pile some of these picks. You know, and and trade up your your first rounder and a third or a fifth or whatever to to move up a slot or two. Yeah. If you, but the Giants, let's let's be honest, right now the Giants are very very much. And as long as they keep trading guys, it's going to get worse and worse. They are very much in position to have the number one overall pick. They're right there. 
Yeah. I mean, they are absolutely right there. It's them or the Raiders. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the Jason Palermo, he actually wrote, Jags O-line isn't great either. Either uh, Bortles has had no time either. Um, and I, I think that that's, that's also due to Bortles. Because when you have a quarterback who runs like Bortles does, your line doesn't really know where to be. They don't know where to go. So they're not 100% sure if he's going to be moving outside the pocket or if he's going to stay in the pocket. Eli just stays in the pocket. So we don't really know what they're going to be like. They, uh, uh, Cody Kessler, when he was playing with the Jags, he had time. He mm. had time to throw. He just stayed in the pocket. So yeah. I, it's, it really depends. It depends on the situation, the kind of O-line that you have. I think that that's part of it. Um, and then he also wrote that the Giants are drafting a quarterback one year too late. Um, that is, but you would never have gotten Saquon Barkley. And I think Saquon Barkley is something that you needed. And he's not the most important figurehead. You need a quarterback. And they have the ability to get the best quarterback. There, there's talks about this. Just I think his name is Justin Hebert or Herbert. Herbert's so coming out of Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, that he is not only the best quarterback coming out of this year's draft, but he is the best quarterback that's coming out of the last several drafts. Like that's how good he is as a quarterback. So we'll see. We'll see how good he is. He could flop. I mean, obviously any draft pick can flop, but this is the guy that you really need to keep your eye out for, and that's the guy that you know, could be your guy going forward. And it's not one year too late. You know, Landon Collins, really young. OBJ, still really young. Shepard, young. Engram, young. O-line is, is going to get better. They're going to be able to draft and get the O-line a little bit better. Their defense on the, on the defensive side of the ball, pretty young. So they have, they have a window of about five years to really kind of solidify all this. And that means drafting a quarterback next year. And then they have a couple of years. I think that the Giants are, they, they did, Yes, it would have been nice for them to get Darnold, but Darnold would have just been getting sacked left well, and right like over and over again because the, the they didn't have a running though, back. The problem, though, is that no matter what, no matter who the Giants pick, that, that individual is always going to be par compared to Darnold. Always. Mm. And it doesn't help that Darnold actually plays in the building. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> he's in the – he'd be in the same locker room on a, you know, on a, on a, on a day when the Giants are home. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. That's going to be the comparison there. Yeah. For, you know, so whoever the Giants get, he better be as good or better than Herbert or, or, or better than Darnold, excuse me. And if he's not, that pick is always going to be questioned. I still look back on that pick and still say that was the smart thing to do because it, Saquon Barkley is a generational player. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fairly he's obvious. He's running back for the next eight years. And when you consider <laughs> – when you consider actually just how bad that Giants offensive line has performed, how, how, how much they've underachieved and how well he has played, I think you should feel even better about that pick. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's, um, let's get uh, into the, uh, the other the side. quarterback league though. Yes, it is. Um, let's get into the Raiders. Trade, they traded away their best wide receiver to the Cowboys where I think Jerry Jones was kind of in his last-ditch effort to save a guy – he sided with that quarterback. Um, yeah. A lot of people are talking about the Raiders tanking and piling up draft picks. I mean, did you not see this coming? I mean, Gruden had been out of the league for a decade. Um, he needs time to get this thing going, and he has ten. He has a ten-year contract. This dude is looking long-term. It's smart. Mm -hmm. The Raiders will be better off for this, most likely, like you had said, unless they has a disastrous draft. You know, they they will be better in three years, and then they will be good for the long term. You got to be a little patient. It's going to take some time. They're never going to have, you know, this team be great in L.A. That's not what they were looking to do. They no. want this team to be great when they hit Vegas. And now if we switch on over to Dak and the Cowboys, this is his last chance. This is Dak's last chance, in my opinion. This was to see if Dak can be the guy Jerry thought he was or if he will have to look to for his next quarterback of the future in the in an upcoming draft, either next year or the year after, you know, Cooper is a young and talented wide receiver, um, but he's right now, he's only a good number two and he could be a one in a couple of years, but right now you have Cole Beasley who is a low end two, but he will be better with a solid receiver in front of him. Like Cooper um, Dak. Now he has, he has the resources now to like actually be a winner and I'd like to know what other people think about this. I see Dak, even with this team, the way that it's set up now, as a perennial 8-8, eight and eight, maybe 10-6 team for the foreseeable future, you know, with Dak at quarterback. 
okay to good, but never a Super Bowl contender. He's a poor man's Big Ben. That's what I find, That's what I see out of Dak Prescott. He's got that big body, doesn't have the arm strength, doesn't have the accuracy, can't throw the deep ball as well. So he's, but he is. He can run. He's mobile. He can bounce. He can have people bounce off him. He can. He can make big throws from time to time. He's just a poor man's version of Big Ben. Yeah. Uh, well, first, let me just address the Raiders thing. I still think I don't care what anyone says. I still think what Gruden is doing here is is borderline brilliant if he can because of what he's pulling off here. Now, let, let's keep in mind that over the next two years, he has five first round draft picks. Yeah. So let me let me repeat that over the next two years. John Gruden has currently five first round draft picks and he's going to be drafting low with the Raiders picks. Mm hmm. And he's going to have the he's going to have first rounders from the Bears, which will be, you know, mid middle to, you know, maybe close to 20. He's going to have a first rounder from the Cowboys. Um, he's in really good shape for the next couple of years here. His vision is I think his vision is great if it plays out the way he expects it to play out and he makes the picks that can help this that can help build up this franchise. People will look back and say, "Wow, we got this one wrong. This guy knew exactly what he's doing. The game is not passed him by." Honestly, what he's doing is he's he's pulling off what Jimmy Johnson pulled off with Herschel Walker, but on an actually bigger scale. Because he's accumulating draft picks over multiple years and he's getting a bunch of first rounders. If this works out, people are going to look back and say, especially if the Raiders end up winning a Super Bowl out of this and doing it in Vegas, John Gruden will be a legend. I mean, he'll be he'll be a he'll be a Vegas legend. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's he won a Super Bowl with Tampa. He, this would really solidify him. I I think what he's doing is smart. Now I think it's again, good for him too because he still has that little cloud over him that it's Dungy's team. Like a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit. But but again, the onus the onus is one hundred percent on him to get these draft picks right. Yeah. Um. You know. Now look, as far as Dak goes. I think the Cowboys paid a slightly high price for Amari Cooper. I mean, I actually kind yeah. of thought it was absurd when I heard that the Raiders wanted a first round pick, but the then they got it. The only other people that were interested were the Eagles and they were going to offer a second round pick. But I really think that that was purely just to sucker the, oh, absolutely. the, the Cowboys and, and, in because and they, Jerry and Jerry bit yeah. Jerry took it hook, line and sinker. But I, but look, you got, you got the guy. It was, it was a high price, but you did get the guy. And let's, let's remember this about Amari Cooper. He's been in the league for four years. The dude is still 24. like 20, 24. Yeah. yeah, he's a kid. He's still a kid. So you've you've secured this guy. If you can resign him, you'll have him for a long time. I mean, he'll be a really good receiver for you for another five or six years. Mm -hmm. So he could be really part of this Cowboys. And look, the, the, the Cowboys are clearly not trying to blow anything up. They're trying to take what they have and – and add to it and, and not even rebuild. They're, they're really trying to see what they can do with this team with Dak Prescott. Now you've got, now you've got Cooper. Now you've got Beasley. Um, I'd like to really see the Cowboys get themselves a good tight end um, in, in the draft. Uh, That's going to be but, tough. <laughs> but, but, but I will tell you though, that the Cowboys, I think are, they, they, they look at this division and they say, look, this division is up for grabs. Um, you know, we, we barely, lo we, maybe a game we should have won mm -hmm. in Washington this weekend. And I think they're looking at it and saying, you know what? Our defense is playing better than we thought. We need someone else on offense. Cause we just get Cole Beasley just can't be a one. And I like Cole Beasley. He's a tough, gutty little guy, yep. but he can't be a one. Yeah, no, Cooper, doesn't. Cooper is going to be as close to a one as they're going to get at a trade deadline. Mm -hmm. So now it's up to the Cowboys. They, they've got, they've, they've made a move here, a pretty big move. It cost them, but. Let's see how quickly Cooper can adapt to this offense. And maybe he could be a guy that could actually help put the Cowboys over the top in this division. That's not really an insane statement when you look at this division and the landscape of this division. It's not it's not great. I mean, the Redskins are currently the top dog. But does, does anyone even for a second believe the Redskins are really that good of a team? I, I think the Redskins are actually going into New York to play the Giants this weekend. And spoiler alert, I'm picking the Giants to win that game. That's like how little I actually believe in the Redskins. Interesting. All right. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I think this is still the Eagles division for the foreseeable future. But um, Ronnie Pirro actually uh, posted, sorry, I showed up late. I was busy enjoying some snacks. And that's because he is a Lions fan. 
and they got Snacks Harrison um, for only a fifth round pick, which is, I think, a pretty good deal. Very um, good uh, for that team in particular because they uh, that was that that is something they need, and they went out and made the made the deal, and, and they're going to try and try and get this thing keep. They're going to try and keep it rolling, try and keep it rolling over in Detroit. Um, <laughs> Brian Bry picking the G man hashtag pick watch uh, again not a oh. Nathan Peterman tag it is a the draft pick watch <laughs> also if you haven't had the chance to yet just go ahead and give our video a, th a thumbs up real quick give us a like um, we really appreciate it, it helps get the show out and uh, any of these things even our, our podcast when we post it if you guys can go ahead and give it a like that's great I mean the more likes that it gets in a 20 the first 24 hours is huge so um, you know thank you for you know doing that giving us a thumbs up also thank you for uh, you know listening and downloading the, the podcast as well um, all right so let's get into uh, Thursday night, I mean, uh, yeah, Thursday night football tomorrow night and it's your team, right? The, oh the yeah. Finns, the Finns yeah. playing the Texans. They're in, yeah. they're in Houston. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you go ahead and you, you know, your team better than I do. Oh, I let's sure hear do. What you got to say, buddy. It's not going to be good. I mean, let's, so let's see here. Injury, the injuries. I, I've never seen a team. I don't think with this, this many injuries and I'm absolutely not going to use it as an excuse. It's just a fact. The team is just beat up. Albert Wilson, who's maybe arguably been their best player in the first half of the year, is out. He's got some sort of undisclosed hip injury. They're not. He doesn't. It doesn't require surgery. Is it a belly? But button apparently, ring? apparently, no. It's not belly button ring. But apparently, it's bad enough that they have to put him on IR. So yikes. He won't be there. He's not even traveling. I don't think. Uh, I think the Dolphins are basically down to two receivers: Danny Amendola and Jaquim Grant. Both are hurt. I don't even know if Devontae Parker is playing because. Adam Gase is just non-committal when it comes to him anyway. And then you've got Parker he's and Parker's trade, agent. Trade, he's on the trade. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You've got he, him and his agent battling with the Dolphins. The, the, the His agent was talking all kinds of trash about the Dolphins. And then Devontae Parker comes in and he's like, hey, shut up. I actually want to be here on this team. Why? I don't know. I, I don't know why anybody would want to be on this team. If, if, if there was an opportunity for him to get traded maybe to Philly, I'd be like, yeah, please. Please make, make, say more bad things. I'll back you up. Anything to get me off of this team. Um, but look, this is this is going to be a, this is going to be an ass whooping this week. Um, they are the Dolphins are completely depleted. Um, they have just no depth anywhere. Their game plan is so vanilla. They're so predictable on offense. Um, I, I imagine actually in this game they're going to probably try and run the ball even more, especially with a depleted wide receiver core. Texans are going to know that's coming with their offensive line. Clowney and Water are going to completely stuff Gore and Kenyon Drake. Uh, I if the Dolphins score ten points in this game, I'll be shocked. In fact, I'll give them ten. Mm -hmm. I'll give them ten. I'll say they'll get maybe some cheap touchdown late, but this this reeks of of just a beating. I'll, I'll, I'll go. Uh, Let's go 25-10 Texans. Okay. Maybe, the, maybe the Texans, you know, step off the uh, the accelerator a little bit once it's out of hand at the end. But, so you have 25-10. Yeah. I, I actually have it a wider margin. Um, oh, good. But I have the Finns scoring a little more. Um, I have the, That's uh, weird. I have the D Dolphins scoring 13 points. <laughs> But I have the Texans okay. scoring thirty because, you know, like I, like you said, there is a lot of injuries that are going on in, with the the Finns right now, and I, I just I, I don't like their situation going forward in the short term. I don't know how this is going to play out in long term <laughs> or the long term. I, I mean, it's it's in, they're in rough shape right now. Um, they haven't used Kenyon Drake the way that they said they were going to at the beginning of the year. They said they were going to use him about they were going to give him about thirty five touches per game. He's been getting on average about like fifteen, which is ridiculous when yeah. you have that kind of talent between running it and throwing it and getting him in the backfield. They just haven't utilized them at all. Um, Again, it's a, it's a team that has no identity. They really don't know what they're doing. And I think they also sort of fell a little bit in love with Frank Gore because Frank Gore admittedly has been running the ball sort of like a young guy in the first in the first half of the that's season. That's what old that guys will... do. They, that's what old guys do. They run sure. early. And, and then, uh, but then that'll, that'll bite them, yeah. Yeah, so I, I have the, yeah, I have the, uh, the Finns going to the Texans and I have them getting routed pretty much. I have this kind of, this is going to be a brutal game to watch. Not going to be fun to watch um i think it's going to be a blowout early and it's going to stay a blowout blowout i think you're yeah. going to see osweiler making a bunch of mistakes i think yeah. you're going to see picks i think you're going to see sacks i think it's just going to be a rough game for my reason for the my reason for the 25 too is because i'm saying they're going to get three touchdowns of safety and a field goal in there hmm. all right they're, they're getting a safety brock yeah. osweiler is getting getting a safety and actually the the yeah no it's going to be it's going to be bad okay bad, 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 bad. all right all 
All right, so let's, uh, you know, we'll take a quick break. We're going to take a 30-second break. We'll be right back after this, and then we're going to talk the World Series. We got to see Sale versus Kershaw last night. Ace versus Ace go against each other last night. And then uh, we'll talk about that and what's to come uh, right after this quick commercial from us, Sports Insights. and the sorts with Shane and the Bry Man. 75% sports and 25% sorts. Ah, oh, little outcast here. Um, so anyway, we got uh, some MLB to talk about. Uh, the uh, Who is the lawnmower guy? That is my brother. That is my brother. He asked, Clint asks, who is the lawnmower guy? That is from the lawnmower man. The lawnmower man. <laughs> that is my brother. He is a, he does some directing on the side. So that is, um, he, uh, he does a, did a commercial for us. He's actually working on another commercial for us coming up very soon. Um, and, uh, we appreciate all his hard work and effort because this, I actually like that commercial quite a bit. He's kind of our unofficial producer. He, he really is. I mean, eventually someday, maybe we, if we can pay him, we would be able to get him as a producer. Well, when we're big, when we're big time in it, yes, he'll be our. Producer. And we, you know, we're rambling on and rambling on. He can just come over and like throw stuff at us to tell us to shut up. Yeah. You know? And then we can actually be in the same room, having a conversation, get in each other's face. I'll get lost in your beard, and it'll be fun. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's getting, it's getting we're there. Well. We're doing well. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, and uh, Clint also uh, posted Houston gonna squish the fish. Um, yeah, I I think that's. That's pretty accurate. All right, so let's get into make sure that make sure they get Brian's Unabomber beard in it. <laughs> all right, so um, all right. Yesterday we had Sale versus Kershaw, Ace versus Ace. I put that in quotations before. Yeah. Uh, we didn't really get that. This game was well. this game was kind of brutal to watch if you if you like a pitching matchups. Uh, neither guy had their stuff, and the game was left up to the bullpen. Uh, Boston held on. And L.A., well, they collapsed like a Walmart tent in a windstorm. Um, and I'm going to actually take that back just in case Walmart wants to sponsor us. But, uh, yes, they did not perform well uh, tonight. Well, we, there goes Walmart. Yeah, tonight we get Ryu versus Price. Price, uh, surprisingly. Hey, maybe we got Target. Well, Target? <laughs> I'm a big fan of Target, right? Fan of Target? Yes. Sure. Yeah, of course. <laughs> tonight we have Ryu versus Price. Price surprisingly pitches better at home than he does on the road, but has some issues when pitching in big games. He had a decent, he had a pretty good game last game. Um, his last two performances have been better and better, but uh, there are some key matchups I think people should look for tonight on both sides. And if I'm just going to talk about on the Dodgers on offense right now, um, when they're at bat, Manny Machado hits Price really well. He has faced him 41 times in his career with a 293 batting average with five home runs and off of off of price that is a home run every eight at bats so manny likes to extend his arms and price likes to pitch away from righties so that could make for an early exit for price we also have justin turner who typically has been hitting well lately um he hits lefties better and he loves fastballs david price is a fastball pitcher first um, and even though he's been mixing it up a bit more, he still relies on his fastball. So Turner is another one that could make some noise today. And then two guys who have a shot that uh, could make some noise just because they, they have in the playoffs already. And they're young. You're not really sure what you're going to get from them. They're, they're, you know, is Puig and Bellinger. Um, Cody Bellinger, Yasiel Puig. I don't know if they will play Bellinger tonight, but they should because they need him in the outfield. And mm -hmm. it would also help because I think this, he is the type of guy who can hit David Price. David Price is not your typical lefty. 
He doesn't have this big sweeping motion. He doesn't have this big sweeping slider. Like he has righty type stuff out of a lefty arm. And mm. it he is a guy that I think Bellinger could hit. Now, my biggest problem with this whole situation is the managers. The managers have really you're you're getting to see Alex Cora, who is a smart man. Um, he relies on analytics. He relies on his gut. He's very much that Tony La Russa kind of guy. He's he, he just he is able to take both and make the right decisions. Whereas you have Dave Roberts, who has a game plan, but seems to in a big spot seems to just throw it out the window. And you know you you leave David uh, and I I love Freeze. I love Freeze. I think he's huge. He comes up in big spots a lot. But when you have the World Muncie, Series MVP, when you have Muncie on the bench. You can't sit him in that situation. You know, when you have a lefty going against a righty and you just can't do it. You just can't do it in that situation. You've got to mm-hmm. stick to your guns and you got to go with the right decision. Um, that is a big, that's a big deal. You also have, he, he just has a really difficult time making the right decisions at the right time. Dave Roberts, it seems like he just, and this, is, this is going on two years in a row. Two years in a row, he's being outmanaged. Um, on the biggest stage, you know, he got outmanaged a lot by AJ Hinch last year. And this year he's being outmanaged by Alex Cora, who is a rookie manager. Uh, this is not a good look for him. Um, hopefully he'll get it together and hopefully he'll get a better performance out of Ryu today. Um, for someone who is rooting for, I am rooting for the Dodgers to win. I don't expect them to win, but I am rooting for them to win. Um, it's not looking good. That wasn't a good start. Their bullpen looks shaky, which is bad. And if their bullpen's looking shakier than than the Red Sox, who Red Sox have fixed their bullpen. They've decided to throw Ivaldi or Priscilla or whoever's in there in the mix to not have to get into the depths of that bullpen and really hurt themselves. And that's with getting Sale out in four innings. So Sale went four plus innings and they got him out and they still were able to, to keep him at bay for the most part. So I... I it's it's tough to it was tough to watch, but ultimately um, I do feel like this this series is still going to go long. Um, but I'm sure the Brian man has other other thoughts. Yeah, no, this series is ending in four or five. Uh, I'm sticking by that prediction. Um, I thought the most curious thing about last night was Roberts taking Baez out. In that, where after he had just struck two guys out on high fastballs, uh-huh. looked completely dominant. And he took him out, and actually it was funny because if you saw the look on Baez's face, I think he was looking at Dave Roberts about as quizzically as I was. Yes. Thinking, um, you sure okay, you are you, is, this, is that your final answer? Because <laughs> um, he was throwing gas yes. and looked good. I, I just didn't understand and then the pitching change happens and then Nunez comes in right Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's ball game yes you know look the Red Sox let's be honest they're just having one of those years that the Red Sox that only the Red Sox kind of can have where everything just goes right for them they get unlikely heroes um, from like the strangest places you know you know, and of course, as a Yankee fan, it, it obviously stings a little bit to to see Eduardo Nunez come cold off the bench there, batting a buck sixty seven, and and you know putting putting game one in the pocket for the Sox there with that with that shot to left, you know three run homer eight to four ball game over. Um, it's going to be you look if you're rooting against the Red Sox, it's going to be a very frustrating series to watch because the Red Sox, the one thing that you ha- absolutely have to give them credit for, and I I. I don't recall – not like not, – maybe not in the past eight or nine years. I really don't recall a team quite as relentless on offense as this team is. And when I, when, what I mean by that is they can they – can last night was actually a really great microcosm of, of, of what I'm talking about. If you look at what happened last night, they get up 2 nothing. Dodgers come back, make it 2-2. They get up 3-2. Dodgers come back, make it 3-3. They get up – Five, they get up, you know, four three, and then it's four, and then it's five three, and then the Dodgers come back, and it's five four, and then the Red Sox put it away. The Red Sox just don't stay down; they don't go away. 
you can't it they are the Rasputins of baseball right now. They're just very, very hard to kill. And you got look, you have to give them credit for that. I mean, yeah. you really do. That's a that is a that is a that is the mark of a championship team right there. A team that just it doesn't lay down like a dog. They they you hit them, they pop right back up. You hit them again, they pop up again. You hit them a third time, they hit you even harder. I, I and honestly, we have not seen, especially in this era of you know, uh, copycatting to try and win World Series with, um, you know, bullpens. Mm -hmm. Guys are guys are trying to build bullpens up, you know, trying to build up their pit, starting pitching staff. This is very unorthodox for the Red Sox to be kind of doing this the way they're doing it, winning with a, a lineup that just is relentless. It's very, very impressive. I, I, I mean, I, I as much as I hate this team, I have to tip my cap to them. They are winning in a in – a, a, a very unconventional style, at least unconventional in terms of how we've seen champions perform in the last decade or so. And they're going to, again, they're going to win this. They're going to win this, this series. There is zero chance. This series gets back to Boston. Zero, none. It's just not going to happen. This, this team is far too relentless for the Dodgers. I mean, I, if they did what they did to Houston, and Houston, to me, is a far superior team to the Dodgers. How, what chance do the Dodgers have? I just don't see it. Yeah. Um, so I'm I, I'm giving them more of a chance, especially tonight. Um, you know, I I'm not a big fan of Price. I just don't think he, I I don't think he can be trusted in big spots. Um, now we'll see how that goes tonight. I mean, if this if this is a, a situation where if he has command of uh, of all of three of his pitches and he can actually bust the right handers on the in on the inside part of the plate, if he can actually get in there and, and do it with conviction, then yeah, I think that he could have a good night tonight. Um, yeah. I think, unlikely. I think price is going to be comfortable tonight. I, I think that we talked about this the other day on Monday when we did a little bit of a preview and I said, look, sale and the, the Red Sox are going to get game one and price is going to be comfortable in game two because there's not going to be a lot of pressure. Here we are. Yeah. I think he'll be fine tonight. I think he'll give him something maybe similar to what he gave, in the ALCS, I wouldn't be shocked if he went four and two thirds, five innings, maybe gave up a run at the most. And the Red Sox, I think, might cruise in this one. I don't, I just don't like uh, this matchup. Is just bad. It's just a bad matchup for the Dodgers. It, I mean, it is. I mean, the, the the Red Sox have a more balanced team. It, that's just, and so it might be a little bit easier for Cora to manage. But at that same point, he fixed his he fixed the their weakest link. He fixed it at the time he, they needed him fix it. Now, yeah. Dave Roberts, on the other hand. Is having issues with making the right decisions and sticking with his game plan. And he's, he's messing up because he's not sticking with what he originally did all leading up to this series. Kind of disappointing if you're a Dodgers fan, having watched this guy manage three straight National League Championship Series and now two straight World Series. And he looks... I don't want to call him a deer in headlights. That that doesn't seem fair. No, he's not a deer in headlights. He's just he, not, he, he's the moments almost seems too big for him. Maybe, like he, maybe, hell, maybe he, it is. It's like it's like he wants to be the smart man and come up with these decisions instead of sticking with his game plan. Whereas Cora looks just completely relaxed. Mm -hmm. He looks very poised. I mean, he just he's pulling, he's pushing all the right. I mean, come on, Eduardo Nunez. <laughs> just Look, it's just it's one of those years. It's just one of those years. You just have to It does feel like that, yes. You just have to deal with it. It's just it's just the way it's gonna be. You uh, know, and as, as Yankee fans for us, we just hope we can bounce back. And then you know? and this is this is one of those things that where the manager can make or break you. I mean, and during the regular season, it doesn't really matter that much. You know, as you know, you, I, Damien have all kind of talked about uh the beautiful mind. We we, we have talked to, talked about how he thinks, you know, Damien thinks that the manager doesn't really mean that much, especially in a long season, because you, you oh, get a I game just... or two here and there, and it doesn't really matter that much. I mean, if you saw Aaron Boone this year, you would kind of have, we have a different take on that. But I do really think that the manager can really, really get, really help you out in these, in these big games. Because I think the, yeah, I think the consensus is that a manager can't win you a lot of games, but I believe, lose, but, yeah. but he can lose your games. Yeah. And, 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 and I, yeah, I mean, we, we, we really saw that firsthand this year. I mean, again, I think we, I think we've talked multiple times about how many games we think Boone might have cost them this year. I, I still think it's around the Baker's dozen, to be honest. But. So, and if I, if I was going to be looking at uh, tonight's matchup for people on the, on the Red Sox side, you know, I would really be, I mean, obviously you got to look for JD Martinez because he's just, he's hitting missiles now. Um, uh, yeah. I, I would also look for maybe even Ian Kinsler if he plays tonight uh, against a lefty. 
I would look for him to possibly make some noise because he'll pop. He's gonna pop one over the monster because he he has seen Ryu. Um, not and none yeah. of these guys have seen Ryu a ton, yeah. but he has seen him, so he's probably a little bit more comfortable. Um, and a softer throwing lefty is right up his speed. Like he's not gonna catch up with the ninety eight mile an hour fastball much anymore. Um, but if you throw a softer lefty at him, he could ha- he could he could. He could put some damage up on the board. Um, so those are some guys to kind of really keep an eye on tonight. Going forward, um, this series, like you said, it does not look good for, for the Dodgers. It, you look in, they look in rough shape, um, uh, especially if Kershaw is not going to pitch. I mean, granted, Kershaw did get squeezed a little bit. Um, he didn't get some calls that Sale did get. That's bound to happen when you're pitching away. So you can't really argue with it too much. you got to hope that when you're at home, that the calls are going to start going your way a little bit more. That seems to happen across sports in general. You know, whether you're in the NBA Finals or you are in the World Series or you're in, in any any sport, you tend to get more of the, the the calls when you're at home because the crowd's on your side. And whether the umpire likes to think he does or not, he does. It does. It does affect him. It yeah. just does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, they don't they don't like to hear silence. They yeah. like to call that strike three or that strike and hear the crowd pop off. Like that's it, just that's what they do. Um, so I, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, I think that you know it, it, Kershaw might have a better game when he's at home, um, but uh, as of right now, that bullpen is not looking great um, oh. for for the Dodgers. And you know Roberts is not making the right calls at the right time. So hopefully you know things will change. Hopefully he'll get more more uh, put back in his box and start doing the game plan that he has done basically throughout the year. And really now has it's, it's hopefully we'll, you'll get to see it all kind of unfold tonight and, yes. and it'll, and it'll, the series will be tied. Cause that, that's, I really, I don't really have much confidence. You have more confidence in price than I do. Um, Ryu, he didn't pitch well his last time out, but he has been solid all year. I mean, he's pitch. I think he had like a two, six ERA this year. Um, granted he didn't pitch a whole season, but he pitched really well when he did pitch. So I would expect him to have a big game. Um, and this lineup, though, is really tough to navigate because they have so it's many so guys. hard so to pe- navigate. So they have, they, have, they have guys that can just mash. And they I mean, Ben Attendee, just, four yeah. for five. I mean, even, you know, and he's getting, you know, dunking doubles. That yeah. <laughs> find that's the kind of stuff that you were talking about. Like that is that's right there is happens. the stuff that happens to, to champions. You know, yeah. Yeah. It just things like that just happen. All yeah. right. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on about the World Series going forward? Um, I don't think there's anything big, anything drastic. We got one game. Uh, those are the guys I said, watch watch for Machado, Turner, um, and maybe even Puig and Bellinger, them to have big games if they play Bellinger tonight. I would if I was him. Um, I would also keep David Fries in there, that lineup. Yeah. He, has got, he, he has got to be in that. He hits big hits. And, it's, and so as long as, uh, as uh, Price is on the mound – you got to keep David Freeze in there, um, and then even if depending on what the throw, depending on what pitcher you bring in, you might even keep David Freeze in. But uh, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough haul for the for the yeah. Dodgers. This is yep. this is a big uphill battle, and yep. uh, it's unfortunate because I really would like Kershaw to get a ring before he's done. I would like him to get it with the Dodgers um, yep. because he's just been there forever. Um, and he's been so great for so long. Well, I mean, unless by some miracle he decides to opt out and sign with the Yankees, then of course I'm sure you'd love to see him get one with the Yankees. But well, he's—I he don't think. Well, I don't—I don't know. I don't know if he's going to opt out. He's got a lot of money. I think he's got like two years and sixty-five million. Do you really think that, on that money contract. matters that much to him with the contract that he would get? Uh, no, probably not, because he probably would get about thirty million on the open market for about another seven years. So, I, yeah, I, I mean, he probably does. I, I don't know if he gets seven because of, cause do of you, back well, issues. Well, but... All right, do do you think he's going to opt out? I actually don't. I don't think he will because I think yeah, I that he I wants he to will. be a Dodger. But yeah, so do I. I don't know what he wants to do to win. Um, the Dodgers are not. They have they have the most money to spend in baseball. They just keep throwing it out there. Right, but their team doesn't really look great going long going like i forward. wonder i wonder if kershaw almost looks at the dodgers maybe in the same way that lebron might have looked at the Cavs in saying look this is still my best chance to get to the world series and then we'll take our chances from there yeah. you know because if he let's say if he goes to the yankees or some team like that or even boston the road is harder it is harder. It's not, it's not as easy although harder, look, I mean, let's be honest if if he went to boston you might as well just chalk up another one for them so <laughs> I then, mean, they, then boston has to hope that david price opts out <laughs> 
Yeah, right. I mean, no, the Red Sox are clearly not think, afraid of spending the Red money Sox, either. I don't, I don't think the Red Sox have a $30 million a year to, to put on their books right now. I think they're pretty pretty close to tapped out. Um, maybe Damian knows that a little bit better, but I think that they're a lot closer to the uh, the luxury tax thrash, threshold than than most, especially oh, when— they're, they're, well, Isn't their payroll at like 235 or 240 or isn't something? Isn't that high? Yeah, it's yeah. big. So I mean, I mean it's I not as big as the Dodgers. I don't. Uh, oh no, sorry, it is bigger than the Dodgers. The Dodgers actually got a little bit lower. It's still bad. Yeah, but so I just don't see it happening. Not. I, I, I want to say it's in the two thirties. Yeah, I don't. Million. I don't think Damien's watching, but I, I think it's in the two hundred and thirty. No, range. he's not. He's 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 teaching. He's 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 being a teacher right now and teaching the the history of the world. To, mm. to the young minds. He's shaping minds right now. Um, you know, in his beautiful mind way. Um, so, uh, can you yeah. imagine some of the kids in that class just like he's talking at this like really high level and the kids are just like, they're, 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 yeah, they're like that, that uh, math problem. <laughs> like, what's her, that you ever seen that gift that the guy's like, what? 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 He's going to, they're looking at Damien the way Cam was looking at your brother trying to pull the lawnmower. Like, <laughs> I can't understand him. He's just at a, he's at a different level. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, I, you, you have the Dodgers in what, four or five? I'm still thinking, I'll still say five. Uh, that was my original pick. I'll still, I'll, I'll the say they have one you, out in LA. You have the Red Sox in four or five. You said probably five. I, um, I'll, I'll I have the Dodgers five. going, I'm hoping I, this is a hope. This isn't really what I think. What I really hope is that the Dodgers win in six or seven, but what's more likely to happen is the Red Sox win in five or six. That's yeah. more likely to happen. That's, that's if you're correct. going with yes, the odds correct. out there, that's if I was to bet, I would probably bet the safer bet, which would be the Red Sox. But if I'm just purely as a baseball fan, I want I want the Dodgers to win because I want Kershaw to go riding off in the sunset. Yeah, not really in the sunset. That's not. That's nice. Yeah, I, I would like I would like that to happen. It's well, he's not going not anywhere, even if he wins. But at least at yeah. least it cements the legacy. But I, you never know. Maybe if he won. Then he'd be like, "All right, it's time to move no. on. I got my championship in Dodgers." He's not. He's not gonna, no, 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 no. He's gonna. He, he'll want to cement that legacy even more. He'll at least, he'll be the best pitcher of his generation. He'd have a championship, and he'd want to really lock it down at that yeah. point. You know then maybe at that point he goes for huge money. I don't know. You know what I'm most disappointed in? What's that? I put on the whole thing to put in the comments below, and then I even said, and, and I have all that stuff. I said, "And fire Cashman," and no, no sign, no sign of Joe Pesetto today. Well, he'll he... fire Cashman in here. I'm very disappointed. Well, well I think Joe. Um, I think Joe's just just disgusted right he's now. Disgruntled what? with the way that things are going. Yeah, I think so. I, I think this. I think this is going to be a rough week for him. Baseball life is going. It's just not not great. Yeah, I think yeah. it's going to be a rough week. Mm-hmm. But even not even enough to say fire Cashman. Even after what <laughs> Nunez did last night. Apparently not. I mean Nunez. He used to yeah. be Yankee. Uh, I'm sure. Well, listen, if he if he pops back back in, I'm sure we'll see. It. But we're wrapping up. So <laughs> we are. We are very much wrapping up. All right. So uh, thank you guys for listening. That's pretty much it for our show tonight. Um, if you, do you want to mention anything? The Goldbergs. Uh, I want to. Uh, yes, I want to mention a couple quick things. One, watch the Goldbergs tonight. The return of Robert England as Freddy Krueger. May never see it again. He says he actually might have one more left in him, but whatever that, that happens, whatever that dumps slip. truck of money backs right, up right, onto right. your lawn, everybody has one more in them. So that, number two, uh, there was a Mega Million jackpot winner in South Carolina last night. I had family person, in South Carolina. That, that person is walking away with $1.57 something billion. Dollars, Just so good one? Work. One person won? I believe it was one ticket, yeah. I think so. Winning Man. ticket was sold in South Carolina. Which, by the way, I feel like South Carolina has had a couple of these. Is there something about like should I should I drive to South Carolina next time there's one of these? Just I think grab it's a just, ticket? They just buy tickets out there. They must buy them in abundance. Maybe. Uh, what else did I want to mention? Oh, horrible news today. Like the, there were bombs left on like, there were bombs that were attempted to be mailed to the Clintons and to the, and to, uh, the Obamas. What is going on right now? I didn't even know that. All, all kinds of, and then I think, and then I think there was a building evacuated today because of a, some kind of a bomb. Uh, there is just all kinds of weirdness going on right now in the world. It's a scary place. It really oh, is. Lord. Yeah. It's very, very scary. Crazy. Very times. scary. All right. Well, uh, yeah. If you can find this show anywhere podcasts are played, you can iTunes, iHeartRadio, all that stuff. Um, you can find it. You can find us at our website, which is www.sportsandsorts.libson.com, uh, where we uh, all our shows are posted. And uh, you can just click on whatever one you want to listen to, uh, put it on in the background while you're at work, whatever you want. 
And then we can also, you can find the show, it gets uploaded a little bit later every day. Uh, every time we have a show, we take that live episode and we put it onto YouTube a little bit later. And that is where uh, all of our shows are uh, since we started going live. Uh, we also put some clips up there. If you can, We actually posted a clip recently about Bryman going crazy after Boston fans. I suggest you watch it. It was pretty funny and uh, entertaining. Uh, By the way, I, I felt a little better about that rant too last night because the Red Sox fans... Uh, they were randomly really started chanting Yankees suck. Yeah, so weird. So, so if you're like, a Red what? Sox fan, if you're a Red Sox fan and you think, ah, oh, no, the Yankees, the Yankees aren't living in my head, you're full of crap. Uh, the majority. There you had zero reason to be chanting Yankees suck last night in a World Series where you're playing the Dodgers. The majority speaks differently for sure. Um, so yeah, if you uh, if you have uh, any time, go over there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. Just type in sports ampersand sorts sports and sorts in the search bar, and it'll take you to our page, and then you can subscribe. Um, we also post it. I think you can find it on our Facebook page where we go live every Monday at 10, every Wednesday at 11, and every Saturday at 10. We do that every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. We go live on Facebook. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Shane and Bryman. You can find us, find me on Twitter at Einhorner Finkel. You can find me on Twitter at the underscore Bry underscore man. And yes, Facebook.com slash Shane and the Bryman. Find us there live Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. You can email us, Shane and the Bryman at gmail.com. We are all over the place. Hit us up. Talk to us. We like you. Thank you for listening. We'll see Stay you classy. Saturday. Stay classy, Planet Globe. Yeah, see you Saturday. Hopefully it'll be a closer yeah, yeah. series. Yeah, well, probably not. Oh, and I, I just, and there's, you know, just one more thing, too. Like, you know, uh, when I was at Game 6 in 2009 when the Yankees clinched against the Phillies, there was nobody chanting Boston sucks. We were just celebrating number 27. So, I like them apples. <laughs> Eli Apple? Oh, poor Giants fans. Bye. Okay, bye. You can find Sports and Sorts with Shane and the Bry Man on iTunes or www.sportsandsorts.libsyn.com.